a cellulose pancake, basically. It's almost pure cellulose. It's a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. Kombucha is uh, a sim scoby, the mother. Hang on. This is just a pile of them. This is last resort kind of thing. When when, a, when, a, when someone wants a keg really fast, I have to force carbonate it, which is what I'm doing right now. So they call me the keg whisperer. Blup, 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 blup. Just gets extra carbon dioxide into it as well. Get it ready for service. <laughs> My name is Spiro Theopilatos. I am the founder and brewmaster of Beyond Kombucha. I'm a native Astorian New Yorker, and it's uh, where we are. <laughs> Obscure. That's one of those hard to find guys. We'd show up at a party and like people would be like, what the f Before Beyond Kombucha, I was the director of waste cooking oil collections for Tri State Biodiesel. I helped build New York City's first waste cooking oil, restaurant waste cooking oil to biodiesel collection service. We started with 150 restaurants and wound up with 3,000 after two and a half years, including Grand Central Station, the entire food court there, the Silverstein buildings at the World Trade Center, where my crown jewel in that experience was uh, Yankee Stadium. The World Series 2009 victory year, every drop of waste cooking oil they made was turned into biodiesel on my watch. And, uh, that was my goal and I just said, okay, I gotta go. I gotta move on to something else. And I handed the reins to somebody else and uh, went out to Boulder, Colorado, did some soul searching, came back from Boulder, just decided, hey, you know what? I love fine tea. I also love fermentation and kombucha. I put the two together and um, people started to take a liking to what I was doing because it was just really beyond what they were normally experiencing, which at the time was a little more than carbonated vinegar, with a little flavor, fruit flavors and whatnot. And um, I was presenting something completely different. You know. Salad dressing, vinegar, basically. It's beautiful though. Look at the quality of the scoby, it's amazing. This is totally, totally cool. This room is gonna be filled with jars doing this. Before the Tri-State Biodiesel years, I was an electronic music producer and a DJ, and I was traveling the country doing uh, late night gigs and all that kind of stuff at clubs and festivals. This little crew flew me out to Ashland, Oregon, which is where everybody, it seems, cuts their teeth. Everybody from like <laughs> the Glitch Mob and Bass Nectar, actually, he played his first gigs up there too. This girl just bought me a bottle of kombucha and I was like, what is this? She said, it's kind of like a beer, but not. It's, uh, you'll, you like it, try it, you like it. This is like fizzy vinegar. But then um, I just found that it was like very uplifting. It had a very uplifting energy to it. Whereas beer will have a downing energy. After like a week of being out there and drinking it almost daily, I felt like pretty, pretty great, pretty like um, healthy.
my father, Chris Theofilados, who's made all of this possible. I'm very proud to introduce him, and he enjoys what I make too, which is yeah. really gratifying. It's very nice. <laughs> okay. with the filter well yeah pretty just self-explanatory I guess but just in case you know because there's some yeast that settles yeah. the vessels yeah. so it actually catches there's a, there's a really good filter that I'm gonna be picking up I gotta get back there okay there's a really good um it's a wine polishing filter that has a two micron screen this is 200 micron wow so two, two microns can be a lot more uh, Please, did you mention what I'm doing for the for the um? Yeah, he talked a lot about you and yeah. his father. I'm doing a geisha, um, actually a full full fledged painting. <laughs> This is how I get my honey. <laughs> That's my honey. My goal is what I'm doing. And there's a whole lot of people in my community that could really use work. <laughs> if I can give a lot of people an opportunity to do something creative, producing something this good and wonderful, be proud of it, contribute to something fantastic and bigger than themselves, that's, that's, that's very gratifying. The fact that I can ferment with honey now is fantastic. It's from the Adirondack Mountains, right upstate New York, Sullivan County, uh, and this is, as is the maple syrup. I don't. <laughs> what? I wasn't even listening. Okay, February, February 8th. I just ordered one from the internet and they just, they reproduce. I mean, it's, pro it's the fastest growing culture. I mean, it's, it grows so quickly, like literally in nine days, you can have another uh, half inch layer in whatever um, vessel you grow it in. Like this is just a pile of them. Normally, you know, you'll have one and a bunch of tea, sweet tea, and then another one will grow on the top like a film. And it just grows really fast, just expands. It's just a cellulose network, basically. The funny thing is, it's similar to a jellyfish in that, you know, you'll have this film on the top and then these tendrils basically will just go down into the liquid, into the tea, the sweet tea that you have underneath it, um, and just digest and like populate the, tea, the sweet tea with, with probiotics. The probiotics will f float up and create the cellulose culture at the top. Their food is sugar. They, they love sugar. That's why I'm saying sweet tea. It's out of control. I've never seen anything do this. It's a strong ferment too. The whiter they are, the better they are. And the white ones will be nice and firm. They'll, they'll be fast. Put a white one with some well-fermented tea and do a batch of sweet tea, fresh sweet tea, and it'll just go for it. Mara. Probably the best Mara I've ever made, too. Maple, M-A, Vanilla, V-A. It's, it's by far. Actually, this is one week older than this. Maple syrup is vastly improved. Vastly improved. Yeah, it's a local, well, Adirondack. Older one, like a browner one, one that's like fermented a few batches at this point. It's a little slower. But no, no worse. I mean, it'll it'll still wake up, pop 
populate the, t the sweet tea and it'll still create another, another culture on the top. Once I have refrigeration for these things, once I'm able to cool them to 30 degrees, 32 degrees, like the yeast will just fall and they'll be crystal clear. Soon to be massive fermentation room, we could probably do somewhere in excess of 3,000 cases a week in here. It's really resilient. I mean, it's really old and very simple. You see, the simpler an organism is, the more resilient it is and it stands up to evolution better. It's fascinating. But this is like we're talking two and a half thousand years. Love Potion would be great in bars. Mavaroka is actually a production pot of possibility at this point. Mavaroka is going to be, it's at the Kickshaw, it will be a cafe bar, it will expand gradually. We're going to be putting it in 16 ounce flip top bottles. The bottles kind of collect the I mean, it's, you know, you can buy it just a bottle and then have this incredible beverage inside. You're like, wow, that's cool. By virtue of our Union Beer distributorship at this point, um, we're going to be everywhere. Um, all through New York City. Uh, I think our primary target are the bigger markets like the Whole Foods, the Gourmet Garage, Dean and DeLuca, Fairway. Um, but anywhere that's going to have craft brewed beers, craft, micro-crafted beers that you, you know, you know the store's got that stuff, you will find Beyond Kombucha. Try it. You won't be disappointed.